during the brainstorming phase of uh, your project, you were making sketches, but you weren't paying attention or didn't need to pay attention to the specifics of the design. You just wanted a general idea of what your project was going to look like. Now in this phase, you're making a detailed drawing. And I wanna point out some of the details of a detailed drawing. The first thing, and this should be just a reminder, if you have anything that is rectangular, remember you're using the isometric lines of the graph paper. So I started right here with my line going up and down and then counted the number of squares that were my distance in length and width and drew my cube on those lines. So I had a nice clean drawing and you should always in a detailed drawing be using something with a straight edge to get nice clean lines. This is not a sloppy drawing. You also want to draw your model so that it fills up your graph space with room for dimensioning around it. So on this paper, for instance, I wouldn't want something that was drawn small in the corner here and then try to put the dimensions on because it's very difficult to dimension a small model when you have to get all those numbers and lines in there. So use up the space, make it nice and viewable to the person that needs to see and understand the dimensions of that drawing. Also, don't forget how to draw your circles in your sketching packet. Actually, in the sketching techniques, you were taught, just watch, maybe this will ring a bell. Right? Make the square, and now we're using the isometric grid, right? Then the midpoint of each line segment, and now you can see better how that initial arc should have gone and underneath it's hidden but don't forget how to do that some of the things that you learn in here we go a little bit fast but when i tell you that you need to pay attention to the details of the tutorials i mean that for a reason you're going to be using the information i provide to you you should have every dimension on your model so that if I if you handed your detailed drawing over to another person to create an inventor, they would have all the measurements they need. At the same time, you don't want to over dimension. In other words, I have the dimension for this side, but I don't need to dimension the top of that same face because I can see that they are parallel and congruent. So that would be over dimensioning. Now in terms of how you draw that dimension, notice that you have line extensions. Here I'm measuring from this end of the line to this end of the line. So at this end, I extend that line segment right there with a little break in between and then take this one and extend it. And then to put in the measurement, I make a line with a break in the middle for my measurement, and then nice neat arrows at the end of each line. And then I place the number in the middle. Now notice that there are times when the number is not going to fit in the middle. So here I have the measurement of this fillet and I can't fit the one fourth inch in here. So I draw arrows from the outside of those extension lines inward and the number goes on the outside. So that's how you would notate that type of dimension that won't fit in the middle. Another rule to follow whenever possible is you want to put all of your dimensions outside of your model's drawing. In other words, I have the two extended, this two inch height is extended way out here where you might think, hmm, here's a nice place right inside. But a rule of engineer's drawings is that whenever possible, we try not to put the dimensions right on the model itself. 
and we have these lines extended outward. When you do that, you should go from your smallest line to your largest line. Here's a good example over on the G. I have this measurement of 3 fourths, the G itself, the height of it that is, inside these two. And this one is a little bit larger. It's from the top of the G to the bottom of that cube so that if a person were to replicate this, they would know the distance. You just subtract these two and you would know the distance of that G from the bottom of that pop out. And then you have that one inch measurement of that pop out itself, the extrusion of that cube on the face. Notice that a radius is notated with a capital R and that measurement has an arrow that bends to the arc or circle, probably an arc, a circle is going to have a diameter symbol. And here we have that like a zero with a hash going through it and then the measurement right behind it. Okay, make sure you get my signature as it says on your instructions before you begin modeling.